be beaming, I be booming down that block. Down that block. Everywhere you go, you know they know I'm hot. What's the deal? What's going on, my good people? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. Pull up a seat. Hope you enjoyed the content. And before we get into this video, I want to ask that you like, comment, share, subscribe. Go ahead and tap that bell while you're at it so you're notified anytime I drop a brand new video, go live, or schedule a premiere. All right, y'all. So I'm back. I've been gone for like a week. I was under the weather, had a cold. I'm about 90%, you know, I'm almost there, but I feel so much better. Look better too, y'all. I feel, feeling good. <laughs> I'm still a little bit nasally, but I, for the most part, I'm much better. Almost 100%. Thank you guys so much for checking on me. My cold is just about gone. I'm happy to be back here with you guys. I missed you guys so much. So thank you for checking on me and, um, you know, making sure that I was good, seeing if I needed anything and just seeing how things were going. So thank you guys. Um, so today, you know, we back with it. I'm happy to have an appetite. Uh, we have some stuffed bell peppers. This has a spaghetti spin on it and um, I'm just ready to get busy. So, and also, as you saw from the title, we're going to have a story time today. I realized this is the first story time that I have told in the kitchen this year in 2021. So, yeah, so we kind of taking things back, you know what I mean? So, anyway, y'all, hold on. Let me show y'all this pepper real quick. Hopefully, I can get that to you. Ooh, this is hot. Ooh, y'all see that? Ooh, that's hot. So, let's go ahead and dig in. Yes. All right, let me go ahead. Ooh, I took the top off with the cheese. All right, that's cool. Give y'all that bite. Mm, make it a mess already. Typical Rhonda. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm. Y'all, this is so good. Mm. And easy. This is definitely a meal that you can make in like, I'll say 25, 30 minutes. I do have a cooking video. I'm gonna drop that tomorrow. So walk you through all the steps. So y'all look out for that tomorrow. But what's in here is um turkey. Um, I got, I have some, what else is in here? So turkey is in here. We got mushrooms, onions, cauliflower, broccoli, and spaghetti sauce with some seasonings. And some herbs. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Hmm. -mm. Mm. Y'all. I've been in the bed looking pale, looking raggedy for the last week. I'm so happy to be out the bed. Happy to be walking around the house. I got my color back. <laughs> happy to be eating all of that I did take a test to make sure I tested negative but you know what um so I know it was just a just a common cold but I haven't had a cold in so long so I had your girl I was down okay I've never experienced this much congestion in my life like, it's crazy. Flavor is delicious, y'all. This features my good as can be jalapeno garlic pepper. Y'all know I'm sold out. I am sold out of the jalapeno garlic pepper. So thank you guys so much for always showing up, showing out, and you know, like just supporting me like to the max. I appreciate you. I'm out of I'm out of the jalapeno. So yes, the jalapeno I'm out of, but I will, my goal is to be restocked by next month, by June, but I do have a couple Cajun lemon pepper left in stock. So this is a low sodium seasoning company. If you aren't familiar or seen it for the first time, low sodium Cajun lemon pepper, get this in your life. I got some of this in stock. The link is below, goodascanbe.co. Check it out. You know what I'm saying? Put it in your rotation. You know, grilling season is upon us. You know, I love putting it on my wings. I love putting it on my fish. I love it on my shrimp, my salmon, all of that. So, just saying. I've been wanting spaghetti for a minute, so this is so 
good to i'm so happy to finally have my spaghetti fix but not have the noodles because the noodles make me really really full so this is perfect also too you know if you have when i show you guys the video when you have like that extra meat filling left over man i just pop that in a bowl sometimes you can pop it in a bowl put some cheese on top and just have that you know and i love red bell pepper so let me get a piece of bell pepper too Oh, this is too good i mean this is just like so comforting this for like a nice warm hug because i ain't really had an appetite for like a week so mm. so good oh yes all right y'all so i'm about to go ahead and get into the story time anybody that's new here I would consider myself a storyteller. I've told quite a few story times. Um, there's a ton of playlists uh, where I've talked about some previous things in my life. And since I've told you guys everything about my life, I'm focusing more on fiction stories, you know, giving me a chance to create characters and, you know, their different conflicts and stuff like that. So today we're going to focus on a couple named Evan and Danielle. And before I start with that, I want to shout out everybody that came to my play last Friday. Um, I wrote up my first play, like a stage play. Um, it was 10 minutes long called After Hours, and it was performed last week. Um, shout out to Soul Kids. Shout out to Old Globe Theater for the opportunity. And it was performed last Friday. A lot of y'all came through. A lot of Y'all showed me a lot of love. So thank you. If I didn't get a chance to thank you then, I want to thank you now. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if anybody missed it, don't worry. I got more stuff coming up, you know, that I'll be able to share with you. So don't. So hold tight. Don't even, don't even trip. One thing about the stuffed bell pepper, too, is, like, it's a lot of vegetables in here with the turkey meat. So, if you have somebody who's, like, you want to get more vegetables to them and get them in their diet, this may be a great way to disguise it. Because, like I said, I have mushrooms, onions, cauliflower, um, broccoli in here. So, I just wanted to say that real quick. So, again, look out for the cooking video tomorrow. All right. So, I think I might stop eating so I can just focus on the story time, y'all. Let's take one more bite, though. Mm-hmm. All right. Because I'm telling y'all a full story this time. It's not going to be any continuation. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. So I'm not sure how long it's going to be, but it may be longer than usual is what I'm thinking. All right. So I want to remember all the details in my head. All right. So let's get to it. So again, this story is about Evan and Danielle, and they've been married for about six years now. Uh, things started off pretty good in their marriage, you know, um, traveling together, doing things together, spending time, you know, dating each other and stuff like that. Uh, then, of course, when things kind of, things kind of settled down, they kind of fell into a routine of, you know, work, um, come home eat, go to sleep, and, you know, they kind of fell off with the whole dating thing, right? So, again, they're in their sixth year of marriage, and also what they're experiencing right now, um, they're having fertility issues. They've been trying to get pregnant for, like, the last year, and the doctor really is not able to determine what's keeping them from getting pregnant, and so Evan takes it upon himself to, to blame Danielle. He's just like, this got to be your issue. This can't be my issue, and she's like, well, it could be either one of us could be the issue while we're not getting pregnant. You know what I'm saying? He's like, nah, it's on you. So, like, low-key, he's, like, starting to, like, shame her. You know what I'm saying? And, like, talking negative to her about him not being able to give her a baby and stuff like that. And, of course, you know, that's causing friction in their marriage, right? So, Danielle eventually goes on to say that, you know, well, why were you throwing this in my face and all of that? Maybe it's not happening because I never really wanted kids to begin with. So, maybe that's why I'm not getting pregnant. You know, that's something I never saw for myself, you know, and... I was coming around to the idea of having kids because I know how bad you want kids. And so he's like, why didn't you ever say that? You know what I'm saying? If I know you didn't want kids while we were dating, you know what I mean? Like, I, we probably wouldn't be married. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's something that is important to me. And she's like, yeah, I know it's important to you. That's why I'm, like, trying to be on board with the whole baby thing. So, 
you know, that causes friction. So he's like, you know, if you haven't been forthcoming about that, what else have you lied about? You know, what else are you not being honest about? And she's like, wait, 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 let's not talk about, you know, honesty. You know, I was washing your, your clothes the other day and, you know, a, a receipt fell out of your pocket and it was to a bank account that at a bank that we don't bank at. It was at a credit union and it's an account I'm not familiar with. And you took out a bunch of money. I mean, that was, it was like ten thousand dollars that he took out. So she's like, let's not talk about like not being honest. Like, what are you hiding from me? You know, where is this money going? What is happening? And so he's like, I don't understand why you're going through my stuff. And she's like, I didn't go through your stuff. I was doing laundry and I went through your pockets. You know what I'm saying? Making sure they were empty before I put your pants in the washing machine and the receipt was in there. So he's like, you know what? I can show you better than I can tell you. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want you to accuse me of anything. So they get in the car. They get in the car. You know, she's just, you know, kind of going with the flow. Has no idea where they're going. But it's like, if you're going to show me where this money is going, I'd love to see it. So she, of course she goes for the ride. And they're not talking. The radio's not really on. She's looking out the window. You know, he's focusing on the road. And, you know, when they're at the stoplights and stuff, he's kind of looking out the window. They are not paying any attention to each other, right? So eventually they pull up to this used car dealership, you know, and Danielle has no idea what's going on. They pull up to the car, to the dealership and Evan jumps out the car. You know, he gets out the car and he kind of reaches inside of his pocket and he comes back with like this envelope, right? And he has this envelope and he talks to a guy and the guy walks off to go and get this other guy, this other sales rep, right? So Evan immediately hands over the envelope to him and the guy, you know, goes inside of the office, comes back tosses him a pair of keys right so he takes the keys and he hops inside of this like classic car it's like this old school looking car hops inside of it and you know evan's in the driver's seat he's smiling from ear to ear he looks very nostalgic you know danielle hasn't seen him smile like this in like a while right so he's in this car right and um you know so he starts the car up and he circles back around he pulls up on the side of danielle and she's like so you bought a new car and so he's like, actually, this is my brother's car, you know, and his brother was murdered years ago, like maybe a year before they even met. So he was just like, you know, um, yeah, like this is my brother's car. And I ran across it. I saw it caught my eye when I passed his dealership one day, but I got out of it. You know, I knew it was my brother's car. It felt like it was his car, you know, because of the make, the model, the color. But I looked inside of the trunk and he had his initials engraved in the trunk. So I knew it was his car. So I wanted to get it back. Right. So I got his car back or whatever, you know, this, this is something I want to hold on to for my brother. So Danielle kind of feels bad, you know, she's like, damn. So she feels bad and she's like, well, I'm glad that you were able to get the car or whatever and, and, you know, whatever. So she hops in the driver's seat and she's like, follow me. So he follows her and they pull up to a fish market and it's a fish market they used to go to all the time when they first met, but they haven't been in a long time. You know what I'm saying? So she kind of is riding on this whole nostalgic feeling that he had of getting his brother's car back. And it's like, you know, let's go to an old spot that we used to really enjoy. So they go in and they just, they order everything. Fried fish, they got fried shrimp, oysters, hush puppies, fries, potato salad. Um, you know what I'm saying? They got 7-Up cake, sweet potato pie, pineapple sodas, uh, strawberry soda. They got the work, y'all. So they got everything. They got this huge, huge order. And, you know, they go to the table and they're sitting around waiting on their food. And she's just like, you know, I feel really bad. I'm sorry for accusing you of anything or whatever. I'm sorry. And he's like, you know, I probably should have let you know about the account, you know, but I had it even before you and I were together. You know what I'm saying? My brother passed away and I was his beneficiary and I, you know, got all this money and I wanted to keep the money separate from any of my other accounts. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I'm able to pay the taxes on his properties and stuff like that. You know, I, I handle his business or whatever. And so she just like is kind of thinking like, damn, like I hate that I didn't know that, you know, but it's good to know now. So, you know, they get their food or whatever, and, um, you know, they're kind of like loosening up and, you know, kind of, they're cutting through the friction that they kind of had, you know what I'm saying? So, um, she's looking at his plate, he's looking at her, she puts her hand in his plate, he pops her hand or whatever, and, um, you know, they kind of, it's light and it's playful, and he tells her, like, you know, I don't know if, you know, you finding that receipt, you know, made you think that I would ever cheat on you, but I'm not that kind of guy, that's not me. And she's like, you know, I know, like, I'm sorry about everything, like, I just... Let's just kind of, let's just move forward. You know what I'm saying? They're having a good moment. They keep on eating and just enjoying each other's company, right? 
So they get back to the house and Daniela still turned up. Daniela's just so glad that they had this moment that was totally unexpected, um, but that they're connecting, you know what I'm saying? So she want to keep on drinking, you know what I'm saying? She want to keep on having a good time. You know, she want to dance, watch TV and just make drinks and just have a couple more hours with her husband, right? Because they don't hang out like that. Like they have just really been in a routine, you know what I'm saying? So he's like, nah, like, you know, I want to get ready to go to bed and I want to get up and go work out in the morning. I'm trying to get up at like five in the morning. So she's like five in the morning. Like, why? Like, who are you trying to impress? Who are you trying to look good for? And so he's just like, I can't do this for myself. Like, I want to get up and work out for me. She's like, you ain't been working out. And so he's just like, you know what? <laughs> I'm not about to do this. You know what I'm saying? So what he does, he grabs his things and he walks into the guest room. And before she can even try to come after him or anything like that, he goes in the room, closes the door, locks the door. And she's just like, whoa, why? You just going to lock the door? And, you know, he's just like, like, I'm, you know, I don't want to do all that. Like you making this more than it has to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I want to take care of myself, I want to take care of myself. So anyway, he goes in the room and she goes in the room eventually. You know what I'm saying? She cleans up whatever. Um, she makes herself a drink and goes into the bedroom. And she's just laying there like, damn, damn, you're like running your mouth. You know, let your mouth get, get ahead of you again. And here you are. You guys were kind of moving in a good direction and you messed it up, right? So she's just laying in bed, like hoping that the, you know, she's going to hear the guest room open and that he's going to come get in the bed with her, right? Never happens. So she finally goes to sleep. So five o'clock rolls around and this is hours before he has to be to work, hours before she has to be at work, right? So she's laying in bed. She hears him, you know, getting up. She can hear the floor creaking. Um, she hears him moving around. He goes to the bathroom. You know, he probably does this morning routine. She hears the water running and all that kind of stuff. And like 10 minutes later, she hears him leave out of the front door. And she's like, damn, like he didn't even say good morning. He didn't even say nothing. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, fuck, okay, whatever. She's like, we'll just talk when he gets back from the gym. Because like I said, he ain't got to be to work till like nine o'clock, right? So she's like, I'll see him, you know, before we both go to work. So she's laying in bed, laying in bed, scrolling on her phone, you know, kind of want to go back to sleep, but feeling a little bit restless. And her phone goes off. So she checks her text alert and it is Evan. Evan's like, hey, you know, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do like, I'm going to work out for like an hour. You know, good morning. I'm work out for like an hour. I'm just going to shower at the gym and go to work straight from there. So Danielle's like, because again, she thought that she was going to get a chance to see him, clear the air, and then, you know, be on the same page or whatever. She's like, whatever. Okay. So he goes, does his thing at the gym. She decides to get up and get herself ready. Right. So she gets dressed you know, grabs a, excuse me, a bite to eat, looking at the newspaper, whatever. And then uh, she's off to work, right? So she can't really focus at work because of the friction that they have. You know what I'm saying? Like, they haven't been in a good place, gotten a good place for a couple of hours. You know, things turn left because clearly they have a communication issue. And, you know, at this point, she wants to talk to her husband, right? But she doesn't feel like, should I call him? Should I text him? So she's waiting on him. She's like, damn, I hope he calls me. So she really can't get nothing done. She can't focus. You know what I'm saying? She's not really responding to emails like that. She is really just kind of checked out. You know what I'm saying? Like she's not engaging with her coworkers or anything, right? So eventually her phone rings and it's Evan. So Evan is like, hey, you know, what's going on, babe? How are you? Whatever. And she's like, I'm good. You know, I'm doing all right. He's like, you don't sound good. And um, she's like, well, you know, I'm kind of like not in a good space right now because of, you know, you and I. He's like, well, can you, you know, can you talk for a minute? Can you step outside? I want to talk to you. Like, it's a, 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 can you go in a, a, a private place? So she steps out in the hallway, makes sure she's the only person out there or whatever, right? And he, she's like, I'm outside. I'm, I'm away from my desk. What's going on? And so he's like, you know what? This has really been eating at me. And, you know, we were supposed to go to, um, we were supposed to go to premarital counseling and we didn't, you know, we talked about it and we focused on everything but that, you know, everything started happening really fast and all of a sudden we were married. And, you know, I feel like with us not doing that is now catching up to us, you know, and I don't want this to get worse. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really want us to fix this if we're going to be together. And so she's like, you know, I agree. So she's like, what do you suggest? He's like, I think we should go to therapy now. We need to go to therapy. And, you know, I personally feel like that a woman would be a good fit for us, you know, and if you're open to that, are you open to therapy? She's like, yeah, I'm open to it, of course. He's like, all right, well, like, you know, I kind of felt like you were going to say yes. So I did some looking around and I found this woman therapist who seems like a really good fit. Um, her location is like in between both of our jobs. You know what I'm saying? So we can, once we get off work, whenever we have our sessions, it should take us no time to get to her. You know what I'm saying? And she's in the middle of our jobs, you know, where we're both located at. And she takes our insurance. She's taking new clients and all that stuff. So if you're good with that, 
um, you know, I can call and see if we can get an appointment, you know, ASAP. And so she's like, yeah, you know, I, I, I like that. So she's like, all right, well, you know, try to enjoy the rest of your work day and I'll see you at home tonight. So, of course, you know, Danielle gets off the phone and she's feeling way more hopeful. You know what I mean? Like she's hopeful, you know, and she's also grateful for like she's feeling the fact that like he had the effort that he's putting in, the interest that he has in, in, you know, them getting to a good place in their marriage. Right. So she's able to kind of like clear her head a little bit, get her work done. And, you know, then she goes home or whatever. So she goes home and, you know, she's there and she ended up cooking dinner. Right. So Evan, when he comes home, he comes home later than usual and he comes to the door and he doesn't, you know, he just kind of doesn't, he just kind of seems out of it. You know, he does has no oomph to him at all. Right. So she's like, you know, you're getting, you're home pretty late. Is everything all right? And he's like, everything's fine. He's like, you know, um, even though we talked about the therapy thing earlier, look at how our morning started. I felt like it was going to be tension and I was just been trying to, I've been trying to avoid that as long as I could, you know what I'm saying? And so she's like, well, I cooked dinner and he's like, well, I ate while I was out. And she's like, Ugh. like, are you sure it's not somebody else? And so Evan is like, yo, like, I just walked in the door and you own that already? No, like, I'm telling you, like, I knew it was going to be tension. Just because we talk doesn't mean it's not going to be tension. And I told you I wanted to avoid that. I probably should have called and told you that beforehand, you know, before I stayed out. But no, there's not anybody else. And like, you own that. You keep on accusing me and stuff and I'm not doing nothing. So whatever. So again, he, you know, storms off, goes into the, the guest room, right? He goes in the guest room, locks the door immediately. She like, damn, here we go again, right? So she, you know, puts up the food, puts it in like, you know, some Tupperware, you know, cleans up the kitchen, whatever. And she mopes into the bedroom. You know, she kind of, as she's walking to the bedroom, she looks to the guest room and, you know what I'm saying? The light is off. She knows the door is locked. And she's like, whatever. So she goes to the bedroom, closes the door, gets in the bed. And she's just like, at this point, she's like, you know, on the verge of tears. She's emotional. She's just like you know, what am I doing that's so wrong? Like, why, like, why, you know, why can't I keep my shit together? Why do I have to keep on accusing this man of something? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, Danielle. You know what I'm saying? Like, your mouth is always getting ahead of you. And this is what you get. You know what I'm saying? So she kind of beating herself up, right? So she laying in bed, can't really sleep, dozes off, wake up, you know what I'm saying? Turning over in the bed, reaching for Evan, realize, realizing he's not there. And then all of a sudden she gets a text alert, right? So her phone goes off. She texts her phone. It's like one, two in the morning. And it's a text from Evan. Evan is like, yo, we have our first, I forgot to tell you, we have our first um, appointment today. You know what I'm saying? Well, tomorrow, I should say. Um, tomorrow um, at um, 7, 15 p.m., you know. And so she's like, okay, you know, all right, cool. So she thumbs up the message, acknowledging the message, right? And she's contemplating on if she should respond and say anything else about like, can they talk or, you know, whatever. So like 10, 15 minutes goes by. She finally decides to go ahead and send him a text message, right? She sends him a text message, apologizing for accusing him of cheating and just, you know, how she can't wait for therapy for them to get to a better place and blah, 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 blah. Right. Composes this long message and sends it. And they both have iPhones. So they both have iMessage, right? So if you don't know anything about an iPhone, whenever you're texting somebody with an iPhone, when you text them it's blue, right? She sends this long text message apologizing and acknowledging everything or whatever. And the message is not blue. Okay. It's green. It's sent as a text message, which means that more, which means like, like usually it's an indication you might've been blocked or maybe you know, the person's phone, maybe on airplane mode. Right. So anyway, Evan blocked her. Okay. Evan said what he had to say to let her know about their upcoming appointment. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be when they get up that next day, they have an appointment that night. Tells her about the appointment and blocked her because he has no interest in talking to her. You know what I'm saying? Because she keeps on flying off at the deep end, accusing him of shit, right? So this man is laying in the other room and blocked his wife, right? So she's now like, yo, like you gonna block me? <laughs> okay, whatever, right? So she just like, fuck this, I'm going to bed. So she goes to sleep. So she wakes up the next morning and it's like 5, 5.30. And this is way ahead of her time. She gets up at like 7, 7.30 usually. But she gets up. She sees the guest room is still closed. She assumes the door is locked. The light is still off. So she writes a note and she slides a piece of paper underneath the door that says, can we talk, right? So she's waiting for him to either, you know, move around in the bed, get up. She's waiting for some type of movement. She never hears it, right? Knocks on the door. He doesn't say anything. So she kind of wiggles the door and realizes that it's unlocked. So she goes through the guest room door and, the, you know, it's empty. Like Evan is gone. And she's like, okay. So she goes to the front 
his car is still parked outside. So she's like, where is he? Right. She tries calling his cell phone. It immediately goes to voicemail because this man blocked her on the phone. Right. So she can't even get in touch with him. So she was like, this is crazy. I can't get in touch with my husband. I don't know what's going on, where he is, what's happening, whatever. She's like, you know what? <laughs> whatever. I'm assuming he's fine. Um, she gets up, she gets dressed. And like I said, she is like way ahead of her schedule. So she gets up, get dressed, and it's just ready to get out of the house. So she gets up and she leaves, right? So she's driving off of the block. You know what I'm saying? She goes to the stop sign, hits the corner, leaves off of their street. As she leaves off the street, Evan comes running up. So Evan went for a run and he didn't say nothing to her. So he's going for a run. And then, you know, he notices that her car has gone out of the driveway. And uh, so I was like, damn, like I missed her. You know what I mean? I didn't get to say anything to her this morning. So he goes in the house, gets dressed, goes and starts his day, right? So Daniela's at work doing her thing, you know, focusing as best as she can. Evan is at work doing his thing the best he can, whatever. So fast forward, this is now time for their first therapy appointment, right? So it's time for their first therapy appointment and, you know, they've met their there. He's, well, actually Evan is the first one that gets there and he's waiting on Danielle. All right. So at this point, Evan is there You know, he's talking to Sonia, who is their therapist. And, you know, they're waiting for Danielle to pop up at any moment now. So 7.15 come and goes. It's 7.30, 7.35. And, you know, Sonia's like, yo, y'all, y'all are being billed for this. So, you know, why don't you step out and call your wife to make sure she's okay? So he goes into the hallway, you guys, and he realizes that he still had his wife blocked, okay? Which I think is petty as hell. So he still realized he had his wife blocked. That wasn't his intention. Um, he just didn't want to talk, you know, after he sent that text message. But he forgot to unblock her. So he unblocks her. And he's like, damn. Unblocks her and calls her, right? So he calls and he's like, hey, you know, where are you? She was like, why haven't you been answering your phone? I haven't been able to get in touch with you. I left messages at work. You didn't get back to me. I was calling to let you know that I couldn't make it. You know what I'm saying? Some things, you know what I'm saying, got out of control at work. And I, I, I've been calling you all day. As, you know, And I was really calling you back to back around 4 or 5 o'clock to see if we could reschedule our appointment. And he was like, damn, I'm already here at the session. And so he's like, I'm sorry. that I, I'm really, really sorry. I didn't, I, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Like, this is on me. And I never should have blocked you. And I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? I'll let our therapist know and to see if we can restart next week. And so she's like, you know, I'll be home in like an hour. And he's like, all right, I'll see you when you get home. So he goes in and tells Sonya, like, you know what? Something came up. I really apologize. But go ahead and bill us. And I'm really sorry. Um, I understand that this session, you know, counts towards our whatever. And we'll be back next week if that's okay. And she's like, are you sure you both are going to be here next week? And he's like, yeah, we'll be here. So... Fast forward that night, they're finally at home together. And he's just like, you know, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know. Like, our communication is just so out of control. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted to say what I had to say. I could have just turned the ringer off. I'm sorry. Like, he just feels, he just feels, you know, he knows that he was wrong. Like, why would you block your wife for an entire day? You know what I'm saying? Like, that doesn't make any sense. So she's like, no, like, our communication is off. And look, I, I'm glad that we're finally getting help. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm glad that we're finally trying to move this thing in the right direction. You know what I'm saying? I forgive you. And we both have had, we both have been wrong, you know what I'm saying? Over the course of, you know, the last couple of months or whatever, right? So fast forward next week. Now they go to their first session. I mean, they now go to their first official session where they're both present. All right. So Sonia introduces herself um, to Danielle and she's just like, you know, um, mom, you know, I'm, I specialize in this and relationships and marriage and blah, blah, blah. And what I like to do is, I like to put my patients uh, on basically, or my clients on an eight-week program. You know what I'm saying? Over the course of the next eight weeks, um, you, I'm going to send you guys with homework. I'm going to send you guys home with homework that you have to do. Um, I'm going to be really, you know, observing your body language, the way that you communicate, the way that you look at each other. And I'm really going to give you my assessment in eight weeks to let you know if I feel like you guys should continue your marriage or not. You know, I'm going to give you, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I'm not going to bullshit you. You know, um, cause some people just don't need to be together at the end of the day. And I'm gonna tell you guys my honest opinion based on what I see, what you guys share, how you communicate. Are you okay with that? Are you, are you game for that? And so they look at each other, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, whoa, like you gonna tell us in eight weeks and they're like, she's like, yeah, I'm gonna tell you where you guys stand and what my true and honest, you know, <clears throat> opinion of your relationship is. So like, you know what we, yeah, okay, we're, we're, we're fine with that. So, you know, they go home the first night, they get their homework assignment and things are just a little bit rocky in terms of that because 
Danielle is the kind of person she wants to work on this immediately. She wants to sit down immediately. And, and Evan, on the other hand, is like, look, it's been a whole full day. We have a whole week to work on this. But she's just like, look, you're the kind of person going to wait until the last minute to do this homework. And I want us to get started right away. Can we compromise and meet somewhere in the middle? They cannot compromise. They just bumping heads, bumping heads, bumping heads, right? He goes in the guest room. She goes in their bedroom. They can't even come to a, an agreement on this, right? So they eventually get this homework done before they're, you know, first, before they have to see Sonia again. And, you know, she assesses everything. So they go through this for eight weeks, eight weeks, eight weeks. There's ups, there's downs, but they show up every single week with their homework completed, right? So at the end of the eighth week, Sonia's just like, okay, all right, so you guys have completed the program. You know what? Hats off to you guys and kudos for being here. I know it wasn't easy, but you guys did show up for every single session. You guys seem to be answering questions, honestly, uh, with an open heart. You guys are being candid. You guys are, you know, giving me detail and stuff like that. So I appreciate you guys showing up. And she was like, and my honest and true assessment of you guys is that I don't think that you should be together anymore. I don't think that you guys ever should have been together. Honestly, you guys are not compatible. Um, your communication styles are completely different. And there's just not a willingness for you guys to, you know, find that common ground. And if you guys can't find that, you can go to any therapist you want to. But if you're not willing to compromise and find somewhere in the middle, it's just not going to work. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you guys can continue to be together if you want to. But I really just don't see this flourishing into... A successful and happy marriage that's just my true and honest professional assessment and I, that may not be what you want to hear but that's what i think and so they like damn they kind of taking it back because they you know they knew that that was always a chance that she might say that but you know you don't ever really want to hear that you know so evan looks devastated danielle on the other hand is just kind of like okay you know what i'm saying like she seems like she's processing and taking the news well right so they go outside, you know, they, they drove from work, so they're in separate cars. But, like, Evan is, like, devastated. He's just like, what? Like, I mean, I don't know what to say. She's just like, let's, you know, let's at least go home and we'll talk about it. So they get home and, you know, they're talking. They're they're looking at each other. But, I mean, not, they're not talking. They're, they're, they don't know, really know where to start, what to say, what to do. And, you know... Evan is like on the brink of tears, like, and Danielle is really surprised. She's just like, you know, I'm surprised that you're responding like this. And he's just like, you're my wife. Like you, you're the one I want to be with. But I mean, I, I, I can't believe that she said that we shouldn't be together. And he, she's like, you know, Danielle's just like, you know what I mean? I, it's not like I can disagree. You know, I don't know that we're a good fit. You know what I'm saying? We hit it off and we had all these sparks when we first got together, but that don't mean we should have ever got married. You know what I'm saying? And we could have saved ourselves some time, some money, some resources, and heartbreak had we gone to premarital counseling. You know what I'm saying? We could have determined that we should have never got married. You know? And our compatibility, like, there's not a whole lot of things that we do have in common. You know? In terms of compatibility and what we enjoy. You know? It's so hard for us to even go on a date because we don't even like the same stuff. And it's just so hard for us to compromise. You know what I'm saying? And we're both young enough to be able to go out and get past this relationship and find somebody else and try again. And he's like, are you serious? She's like, I mean, look, <laughs> you heard, you heard the therapist, didn't you? You heard what she said, didn't you? And he's like, I mean, yeah, but damn, like you seem like you don't care. She's like, no, it's not that I don't care. I'm just a realist. You know how I am. Like I can, I can see things for what they are. You know what I'm saying? And having somebody else professionally say what I've kind of been feeling like I get it. You know what I'm saying? So and uh, she's like, and I've get it so much that I already had the papers ready to go, honestly, you know. So she pulls out divorce papers. And he's like, you you have divorce papers? And she was just like, I just feel like it was a real possibility we was going to get here. You know, over the course of how things have been going these last eight weeks, like, it wasn't, it didn't seem promising. You know what I'm saying? And I just, I don't want to waste any more time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to get the ball rolling. Like, and I, I just hope that you can understand that. And he's just, like, devastated. Like, Evan is like, I can't even believe this right now. Like, who are you? She's like, I'm your wife. But, I mean, it's time for us to cut ties, you know? Like, we need to move on. You know what I'm saying? So, he just can't even process all of this. He's like, you know what? I'm going to go get my things. I'm going to get a garment bag. I'm going to get an overnight bag. And I'm going to leave for a couple of days. I need some space. And she's like, okay, I respect that. I understand. I, I get that. So, he grabs his things. And she's like, well, where are you going to go? He's like, I don't know. I might go to my sister's house. I might go to my dad's house. I don't know. And so he, she's just like, well, all I ask is that you let me know that you make it, you know, let me know that you're safe or whatever. 
And he's like, all right, no, no problem, I will. So he gets in the car, he takes off. And uh, he pulls up to a house and he pulls in the driveway at first. Then he backs his car up and parks it on the street instead, like across the street. You know, has his garment bag, has his overnight bag, goes to the front door and he rings the doorbell. And it's taking a minute for the, the person to answer the door. But he's still standing there. He knows the person is there or whatever. So he's, you know, being patient. So he knocks again and the door eventually creeps open. Now, who's on the other side of this door, y'all? Other side of the door is Sonia, the therapist, okay? He is walking into Sonia's house, you know. He walks in immediately. She closes the door behind him and they kiss. They kiss, they embrace. They're happy to see each other. They look relieved. They look happy or whatever, right? So let me tell you this. In case, let me just fill this in before I finish the rest of the story. So Evan didn't want to be the guy who didn't put in effort. Like he's been over this marriage, been wanting to get out of this marriage as well. He wasn't happy, I should say. Not that he wanted to get out of the marriage, he just wasn't happy. Then he eventually runs across Sonya. They, they meet in passing one day when he's at work. They hit it off. You know, she's everything that Danielle is not. And he's very honest. Like, I'm a married man or whatever. And Sonya didn't care. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, I want to get out of the marriage. But how do I get out of the marriage? You know what I'm saying? And she's like, I have a plan. So they basically came up with a plan where it came off. She wanted it to come off like she didn't want Evan to be a bad guy and all of this. So she's like, why don't you suggest therapy? I'll be your therapist. I'll tell you what the plan is. I'll tell you guys in the end that this shit ain't working. You know what I'm saying? So you guys try to have a clean break and, you know, move towards a divorce. And so he's like, you really think that's going to work? She's like, yes, it's going to work. You know what I'm saying? Like, so basically they planned this scheme to put this whole thing together, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So he knew the therapist when they got there. That's why he chose her. That's why he suggested it. And, you know, he knew that it would make Danielle feel like that he was at least putting in effort and not walking away from the marriage. You get what I'm saying? So... All the, the devastation and all that stuff was an act. Evan don't give a damn. Evan has been checked out. You know what I'm saying? When he goes to the gym in the morning, when you know when he went to get dressed at the gym, he was really at Sonya's house. So all the staying out late and all that stuff, he's been with Sonya all that time. You know what I'm saying? They've been spending the time together and getting ready, devising this plan of them going to these therapy sessions and stuff like that. So anyway, now let's fast forward to like a year and a half, okay? So they've gone through their divorce um, the house that Evan and Danielle were living in belonged to Danielle's family. So Evan wasn't, he didn't get anything out of it. Um, and they agreed that he wouldn't take any part of the house or whatever. They didn't have kids. They didn't have any, a whole lot of mutual friends. Um, they didn't really have anything that they needed to split. You know what I'm saying? The money and everything. Basically everybody came with what they left the marriage or what they came with pretty much. Right. So it was a clean break. So fast forward, um, Danielle is back on the market and she's met somebody, you know what I'm saying? She has a Another guy in her life, his name is Tyson. They're dating, they're happy, um, extremely happy. And they're moving towards, you know, him popping the question. But before they do, she's like, you know what? I absolutely want to go to, I, we got to go to counseling. We got to go to therapy first. I told you how my last relationship ended. I can't do that again. And, you know, I want to go to therapy. All right, I got a therapist in mind. So Danielle is like, look, Sonia, you know, I know you probably are surprised to hear from me, um, but I'm in a new relationship. And before, you know, we walk down the aisle and he pops the question, we want to go to therapy together first. So I'm wondering if you, if I can, if you can fit me in. And so Sonia is trying to like talk her way out of this. Cause she's like, this is awkward. Like, you know what I'm saying? I set you up. I'm with your ex. Like I can't be your therapist. You know what I'm saying? So she's trying to get out of this, but Danielle's very aggressive and also very grateful. She's like, look, you saved me. You're the reason I'm even in this relationship with Tyson. You know, you told me that my last marriage was not working. And that's the only reason why I've been able to find this man, because you helped me free myself of that past relationship. Like, so please, 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 can you please get us on your books and fit us in, please? So Sonia thinks about it. She's like, all right, you know, come in. So as Sonia's preparing for this first session, y'all, she taking down pictures because she got pictures of her and, and her and, and Evan at, at her in her office. You know what I'm saying? Taking pictures down. She's sure to tell her um, her assistant, hold all my calls don't give me any calls. Don't pass any calls through nothing because she doesn't want to risk, you know what I'm saying, Evan potentially calling or whatever. She's like, I'm not taking anybody. If anybody shows up, do not let them in. Like, she's shutting everything down because she needs to get, you know what I'm saying, she needs to get Danielle in and out of this appointment without, it needs to go smooth, right? So they had her first session, goes well, and they continue to have these sessions week after week after week and things go well. Things check out. Her and Tyson are compatible. They're happy. They're communicating well. Their body language, their interests, everything is there. You know what I'm saying? Everything checks out. So Tyson pops the question. So, you know what I'm saying? Danielle, 
calls and, um, you know, tells Sonya to check her mail, her, 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 her office mail. She's like, has your assistant checked the mail today? And she's like, no, why? She's like, can you have her check the mail real quick? And she's like, okay. So she checks the mail. And she's like, did you get something from me? And she's like, yeah, I did. And uh, it's this thank you card, but it's also an, a wedding invitation. She was like, I would love it if you came. You know, you have a plus one, bring wherever you'd like. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm totally fine with that. Again, I wouldn't be in this marriage if it wasn't for you. I hope this is not awkward. You know, I don't know if I can, should be inviting you to my wedding. But again, I feel like I wouldn't be getting married if it weren't for you, right? So she's like, okay, like, yeah, yeah. I'll be there because she's like, I'm going to tell this woman no, right? So day of the wedding comes and, you know, Sonia is lying to Evan about where she's going, who she's going with, how long she's going to be gone and all that kind of stuff, right? And Evan, something just feels off as things are leading up to this wedding day. Like, you know, Sonia just seems a little bit awkward. She seems different, right? So he's like, all right, like something seems a little bit off, but he's keeping it to himself. He's like, all right, whatever, right? So, you know, go they Sonia goes to the, the wedding. She's at the church. You know what I'm saying? Um, she's there. She's supporting, you know, um, Danielle. And she doesn't have any plans on going to the reception. She feels like that's a little bit too much, but she is going to the ceremony and dropping off a gift. And, um, you know, now the wedding is coming to an end. Everybody, you know, is coming out. It's a joyous occasion. You know, there's all these people, her family, his family, friends, all these cars, flowers, like everything, right? It's just a joyous occasion coming out of the church. And, um, you know, they look happy. You know what I'm saying? They look extremely happy. And now from a distance, though, um, Evan is looking at what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Because he followed he had to end up following Sonya to the wedding because he's like, something just wasn't sitting right. Like, I feel like that she was lying and clearly she was. He's like, who the fuck is getting married? So he's like, she had a wedding. She had a church. You know what I'm saying? It looks like a wedding. So he sees everything letting out and he has no idea who's getting married. So, of course, he ends up seeing Danielle. He's like, oh, shit, that's Danielle. And she's pregnant. Very pregnant. And so now he's thinking, like, was I the problem? That is, am I the reason that we couldn't get pregnant? You know, I was blaming her, shaming her. And here she is pregnant. She looks happy. And then he sees Sonia and, you know, Danielle hug. And so he sees them hug and he's like, why, the, why is Sonia even here, number one? Are they friends? Are they setting me up? What's going on? What's about, what, 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 am, I, what am I witnessing right now? You know what I'm saying? So here I, you know, I pulled a scheme. Am I being schemed upon now? Like, what the fuck is happening, right? And that's it, you know? So you just got to be careful with people, y'all. Could you imagine somebody setting you up to that degree? You know what I'm saying? Of where you guys are going to therapy sessions and they are sleeping and starting a new life with the person that y'all going to, to, to with the therapist? Girl, I just feel like that's possible. Like, People are wild. They are wild. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want it to be too dramatic. I wanted to be enough for you guys to be able to follow along. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I'll tell you this, that when starting a new relationship, I don't really think it's about the time, honestly, because you could be with somebody or date them for two years and still never really know them. Or you could, excuse me, connect with somebody that you're truly supposed to be with and know everything about them and know they're the one within four months. I don't know about all of that. You know what I'm saying? But I do believe that Sometimes when people are first getting to know people that they're so caught up in the attraction or the sex that they let a lot of things go by or things are unsaid and um, it ends up being a disaster and catching up to the relationship eventually. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that story time um, and um, I will drop the cooking video tomorrow. So if you're interested in how I made these bell peppers, super easy, under 30 minutes. If you're a spaghetti fan, if you're looking for some low carb options and stuff like that, or if you just want to see me cook, you guys, it's a very, it's going to be a very quick, quick video, but I'm glad I was able to record it. So I'll meet you guys in the comments and uh, that's it. I appreciate you. Be good to yourself. Peace. I be beaming, I be booming down that block, down that block. Everywhere you go, you know they know I'm hot.